Coming up on today's show, we have three veterans from the U.S. military sharing their experiences of God's protection in their lives. You have that peace and security inside that even when something happens, you, you've got something to draw on. You know God's watching out for you and then He's taking care of you. And how God delivered one man from PTSD. They, you know, said I had PTSD and, and I tried everything the world had to offer to try to fix me, to try to feel better, to be able to get out of bed. The Lord, by His grace and mercy, saved me through those conflicts. And how God spared one man's life from a terrorist attack. I was supposed to be on the flight uh, 103 that got blew up over Lagerby. Friend, you're not going to want to miss this show. Our Grace family starts now. Welcome to Our Grace Family. Thank you for joining us. I'm Reverend Steve Millar, a minister here at Grace Cathedral, and this is my lovely wife, Kathy. Today we have veterans from the U.S. military who are also members of Grace Cathedral. Welcome to the program today. Uh, we have Denny, Les, and Nick with us, and we want to thank you, first off, for serving in the military and serving our country. And we want to get a feel of what uh, units you were a part of and what branch of the military uh, you served in. So why don't we start with you, Denny, and just kind of go down the line. All right. I was in the U.S. Air Force. I was part of the 380th Air Refueling Squadron, which was part of the 380th Bomb Wing, which was part of the Strategic Air Command that we were the nuclear deterrent to the Soviet Union uh, back in uh, the early 70s. Wow. And Les? Yeah, I was in the uh, Third Armor Division. It's a mechanized infantry division. It was a part of the tanks. And uh, I was in during uh, 1987 and 1989. Okay, and Nick? Uh, I was in Army Infantry 37, attached to the uh, 3rd Infantry Division. And why don't we start with you, Nick, and just kind of give us an idea of what you actually did in the military. I was a dismount saw gunner. Um, we'd sit in the Bradley, and uh, when conflict would arise, the ramp would drop, and we would uh, close with and destroy the enemy. So can you explain a little bit more about that? A Bradley is a, a, a Bradley traveling is an vehicle. infantry fighting vehicle. It's very similar to a tank, except it has a space for troops to sit and a large ramp that can drop. Okay, and that, when that dr ramp drops, then the, then the troops pile out and line in formation, and then... And then you said that you also, what was your duty? A, a gunner? A saw gunner. Okay. Yep, a squad automatic weapon uh, to where I could lay down suppressive fire to help troop movements that are also moving in other areas. Is that attached to your vehicle, or is that something you carry? No, that is something I carry. Okay. So you were actually in the service during time of conflict. Yes, I was with the uh, expeditionary force into Iraq. We uh, staged in Kuwait and then proceeded to move on into Iraq. Now, during this time, were you serving the Lord? I was deceived. I thought I was, but I was smoking and knew it was bad, but I didn't know it was a sin. And so I think the Lord really saved me because I was ignorant. And you didn't know better. I did not. And you were basically dealing with engaging with the enemy for quite some time there, so you were at risk. Oh, on a daily basis, every day. Can you tell us about your first time being engaged <laughs> with the enemy? Uh, my first engagement after we rolled through um, we didn't know much other than the ramp dropped, but it was during a sandstorm. We couldn't see your hand in front of you. You could hear small arms gunfire in the distance, and I couldn't find my goggles. And, you know, it's only by the grace of God that we even got back in the Bradley without getting lost. So at that point, did you know that God had been protecting you? Even though you were a sinner, you knew that God was looking out for you. Oh. Yes, for sure. I knew God was always watching over us. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Les, let's talk to you and get a feel of what it was like for you when you were in the military. Uh, well, just like Nick, I was in, uh, trained in the uh, mechanized infantry. Uh, when I was in, we were just transferring over to that Bradley. So I had a little bit of work with the Bradley and I uh, dealt with uh, the M113s, which was another personnel carrier before that. Uh, when I got in, I went to Germany. That was my first duty station, and <laughs> I was like 19, so you know, it was like right, pretty much right after I got out of high school, <laughs> yeah. I was in another country. Yeah. That's so, amazing. Uh, yeah. I had a, I had issues at first, uh, Justin, but uh, I made it made it okay. You had to pretty much learn real quick to adjust. I think in the military. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Everything's very structured and orderly, and yeah, you have to learn to uh, submit. <laughs> right, and even though I was in before the actual war started, um, I had to deal with terrorist issues uh you know they were tried to blow up our px and stuff like that over there and i had to learn real quick that you don't leave your military id anywhere you know because you know people were trying to get those oh, yeah. so that they could sneak on post to do things so you know I, <laughs> you have to be on guard yeah. at all times you just never knew when something may happen where you might have to go into action. Right. And something did happen, but we're going to have Denny go ahead and tell us what involved with him, and then we'll get back to you. Okay. Well, my primary job in the Air Force was a navigator, and the navigator in those days was a, a human GPS. Uh, we didn't have GPS at that time, so uh, my job was to make sure that the airplane went wherever it was supposed to go. Um, our primary job, again, was uh, a nuclear uh, a deterrent uh, against the Cold War, against the Russians. Uh, we were like first line uh, aircraft defense against the Russians. In case they happened to attack the United States, we were ready to launch at any time with our bombers and uh, tankers to uh, where the bombers could do their strike against the Soviet Union. I was basically, it was a KC-135, which was a, a flying tanker, a, flying gas station, mm -hmm. uh, to make it simple. Now, this uh, was in the early 70s, right? This is in the early 70s, mm -hmm. 72, 73 is when I was in. And how old were you when you started in the military? Uh, I was uh, roughly around like 21, 22 okay. years old, somewhere in, the, in that point. Now, you said bombers. Did they carry, what type of bombs did they carry? They carried nuclear weapons. Okay. When we were on alert, which I call alert, uh, they were ready with nuclear weapons to, uh, to, to depart and, uh, of course, uh, head for their targets. Um, we, our main job was to pull alert and be ready to go. Pull alert was where you lived in a concrete uh, barracks right close to the end of the runway. Uh, you were in your flight suits all the time. You, were, you lived in the barracks. You only could go to a few places in, on the base. You were ready to respond at any time to jump in your airplane and take off. Uh, they would send out, we had walkie-talkies, they'd send out a, a, a message or a horn, a, a siren, whatever, and uh, just like when police respond and they go down the road with their sirens on and they're going as fast as they can, we did the same thing. We turned our lights on, our sirens on, we were running to the airplanes. Out of the building or in our vehicles, we would jump in our airplanes, we would decode a message that we, they would put out. Everything's, you know, coded. Uh, my job was to decode the message, and if it was a, if it was a, a practice uh, message, okay, that was great because we all we all loved it just to be a practice. If it was a real message, uh, yeah, anyway, you would uh, <laughs> be, uh oh, what's going on? But uh, we were ready to go at, at any time, so that was. So you also said that you you do the refueling, so you're the the plane that goes up are, and tries to. Yes, we are the flying gas station. Uh, in the back of our aircraft, uh, we had a, a large, uh, they called it a boom. There was a large boom that came down in the back of the airplane. It had little baby wings on it so, so you could maneuver it. So it would come down out of the bottom of the airplane and then it had an extension nozzle on it that you could go in and out 
and the other aircraft, whether it's fighters, bombers, B-52s, whatever, they would come up behind you and they just have a, a refueling receptacle on top of them, just like the gas tank of your car. They fly up close. We had a, a boom operator in the back of the airplane and just took the boom, put it over top, extended it out, pushed it in, just like you put gas in your car, and we fill him up. How close did the airplanes have to get to each other for that to happen? Oh, uh, we were probably <clears throat> maybe with less than 50 feet. Okay. Wow. So maybe if, even closer if, if, than that. And if something goes wrong, you know, if you... Well, we could run into each other. Yeah. Somebody could crash, uh, mm -hmm. you could start a fire, mm -hmm. something right. like that. And you're, and you're, you're carrying a... We're carrying, we're, we're, we were carrying like 30,000 30, gallons of jet fuel mm -hmm. uh, in our tanker. And we're, we're flying along, you know, like 450 miles an hour when we're doing that. So, yeah. so there's, a, it's, there's a big risk. There always is a risk. Yeah, yeah. We, we were always in, we were in the airplane. We had our parachutes all on. We had our helmets on. I mean, we were ready to, if we had to jump out of the airplane and eject, we were ready to jump out mm -hmm. at any time if something happened, yes. But that was our prim primary job, just giving... Anybody that needed fuel, we gave them fuel so they could do their job. Whether it's a fighter going in, whether it's a bomber going to his targets, whether it's somebody just coming home uh, across the ocean, we just give them gas so they could go where they needed to go. And see, that's amazing to me about the military. You can have all these different positions, even administrative. There's people who work in the administrative uh, parts of the uh, military. Everyone's doing their part. Everyone has to be in their place to keep things flowing, to keep things moving. And everyone who is a part of the military, we need to really honor them because that's what keeps it going. There was a whole planning department that, that planned all of these missions that we were going to do, planned where the bombers might strike in case of a war. Mm -hmm. Somebody was planning all that, putting it all together and putting it in your briefcase so that when you opened it up in flight, there's where you, you knew where you were gonna, what you were gonna do. That's amazing. Well, we have to take a quick break. But when we come back, we want to hear how God watched over each one of you while you were in the military and how he protected you. So friends, stay with us. We have so much more to come. We'll be right back. John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Friend, if there is a testimony that you have heard on Our Grace Family that has blessed you, let us know. Send us an email. We would love to hear from you. We're back with Denny, Les, and Nick, and they're veterans from the U.S. military. And we're going to start off with you, Nick, now at this point, and let us know what God did for you and how he protected you when you were serving. So the Lord protected me daily. There was not a day that went by where bullets weren't in the air, flying around. Um, I was one step from stepping on a landmine before my... Uh, team leader dove on top of me and pushed me out of the way. Wow. And even though I was in sin, the Lord had mercy and his grace protected me even when I was sleeping. I loved my bug net. There were so many flies and mosquitoes that it was just unbearable. I woke up one morning and there was a hole in it. And I looked to my right and two inches from my head was a bullet. And I know the Lord had to just push that out of the way or I would have been dead. Wow, that's amazing. So here you're thinking about your bug net being destroyed and you didn't yeah. realize that you had just, <laughs> wow. uh, you know. The Lord protected you and your, your life's more valuable than a bug net. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, what a huge blessing that the Lord was able to protect you. And then what happened afterwards? I mean, you weren't saved during the time. How did you come to the Lord? So after a long period of anger and depression, I, I would pray, but I would just never get through. This and is after the after, after, out the, the after I was out of the service, because um, I didn't realize how many problems I had. But they, you know, said I had PTSD and some problems. But and I tried everything the world had to offer to try to fix me, to try to feel better, to be able to get out of bed. 
And it wasn't until I started coming to Grace Cathedral and received prayer that I realized I was actually able to come out more and be happy and smile again and, and not have to, to plead, Lord, help me get out of bed. That, um, and it's just a, a miracle. Mm -hmm. We needed that born again experience, which you thought you had until that moment that you came and got your deliverance. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I then was, you realized I wasn't even saved. Yeah, I was completely deceived. I, I didn't realize that you know smoking would actually send my soul to hell, and so the Lord, by His grace and mercy, saved me through those conflicts to get me to the place where He could save me. And then after you got saved, you probably looked back at all your experiences there in the military and realized, boy, God really did have mercy on me. Extra yes, very much so. It, I can't imagine, I, well, I would have been dead and, mm -hmm. in, and burning in hell. Yeah. yeah. You told us some experiences, like you would walk around complacent, like just bullets would be flying over you instead of being down the ground trying to stay low from the bullets, you just walk around. Yeah, at, at during a point, it, it just became so mundane that I wasn't taking precautionary measures. I wasn't getting down. I wasn't jumping out of the way. I just figured if it hits me, it hits me. If it doesn't, it doesn't, and go about my day. So it's good that the Lord was looking out for you. Absolutely. And protecting right. you. Now, Les, you had an interesting story to share with us. Now, you weren't serving during the time of conflict, but you avoided a serious terrorist attack. And can you share that story with us, how the Lord protected you from that attack? Uh, sure, I was supposed to be on flight uh, 103. They got blew up over Lagerby and uh, it was just a miracle the whole way around because uh, the way it is when the military person's overseas or whatever, they want to keep track of you, so you have to do an itinerary before you come back stateside, and you have to stick to it. <clears throat> well, usually, there's no exceptions to that. Uh, in my case, it was. Uh, the day I was supposed to come back, you know, I didn't do the normal, uh, routine before you come back to the stateside after being gone for a while and uh, the Lord just dealt with me to get to the airport early. But you weren't saved at this time, were you? No, I wasn't serving the okay. Lord. The, the Lord time. was dealing with he you. He was dealing with me and you know, I knew the truth and... Because uh, you, you were raised here at Grace Cathedral. Yes. And, and your mother was a faithful uh, yeah, member of very. Grace Cathedral, no doubt praying for you night and day while you're in the military. Definitely, she definitely was, and looking out for me. <clears throat> and my little church family, of course, was still look, praying for me, looking out <laughs> for me. So the morning of the flight, I uh, got to the airport early. I, uh, and this is Pan Am 103? Yeah. Is that the flight? That's the one I was supposed to be on. I got to the ticket counter, and the... Uh, lady there was like, well, you're here early. Your bags are together. We got another flight going to the States. You want to get on that one? I was like, yeah. And, you know, I've been gone for uh, over a year. Yeah. I was like, yeah, get me home. But uh, I didn't really know what all was behind that. So actually, I got on the plane, uh, came back to the States. The Lord was dealing with me about my uh, spiritual condition. Now, didn't yeah. something happen when you were on the flight coming home? Yeah. We came into some pretty serious turbulence and the uh, plane dropped a good piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lord just kind of whispered to me, I know it was God, and he was like, uh, what if you would have died? And it, it sobered me out pretty much. And you know, I, my intentions were to get back to the Lord or whatever, but I really hadn't said the sinner's prayer. You weren't there yet. I wasn't there mm -hmm. yet. And uh, the way that all worked out is uh, the other plane, <clears throat> it, that's about the time the other plane went down. 
because we were both, both planes were in the air around the same time. And uh, I knew a lot of those people because the people I had trained with <laughs> while I was over there, overseas and... Uh, and they were on that flight. Now yeah. that plane went down because of a terrorist attack. Yeah, they, they blew it up. And uh, so I got to the air, long And no story. one survived that. Nobody. No. It yeah. blew up, Nobody. it landed, and actually killed like people 11 on people the, on the ground. Yes. I think there was a total of 270 mm -hmm. casualties. Right? Yes. Yeah. So when I finally did land and get to the airport, you know, reality was starting to set in because <clears throat> as I walked through the airport, they were gathering all the people together from uh, the plane that went down. I just didn't know what was going on. And uh, I called home, and my mom was losing it because she thought, you know, I was You were on scheduled that, on that other I plane. I was supposed to be on that plane. And I was like, I thought she was just excited because, you know, I finally made it back to the States. And they explained to me what happened, and uh, it really jarred me because, uh, like I said, I knew a lot of those people. And uh, that started my journey on getting back right with God. You know, at the first service I came back to on a Friday night, I did get saved and uh, rededicated my life. You knew that. Yeah. It was just a matter of moments of that airline stewardess or that ticket uh, person giving you an opportunity to get on that early flight. And if right. you wouldn't have been early to the airport, right. you wouldn't have made that flight. Right. And look how God looked out for you and spared your life. And, wow. and it brought you back to the Lord. And yeah. I, think, I think what you didn't say also mm -hmm. though, was the night before you were supposed to leave, you, you mentioned that maybe the, that you would have went out and went out with your friends celebrating. Okay? Right. And then you probably would have been late Later, and you would be on that, that flight, flight with all but those But you didn't other... do all that yeah. sinning. You didn't right. go out that way, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you and you actually, you know, uh, God was dealing with you. He was. He definitely. And He definitely. has a way of of protecting us in different ways that we don't even realize until after the fact. Now, Denny, you were serving the Lord when you went into yes. the military, and how did that help you when you were in the military? Well, it helped. It, it, it helped maybe because you have that peace and security inside that even when something happens, you, you've got something to draw on. You know God's watching out for you and then He's taking care of you. And, and one night when I was on satellite alert uh, in New Jersey, we actually got one of those horns in the middle of the night, which meant that it wasn't a practice because the Air Force didn't do practices in the middle of the night because of all the danger that could happen. And we finally got out to our airplane and I decoded the message and it was, you stay in your cockpit, uh, just stay in your cockpit. We don't know what's going to happen. But it was the, in 1973 when the uh, uh, the uh, Egyptians and the Syrians attacked Israel during the Yom Kippur War, and it's, and the Egypt and the um, Israelis were taking a lot of casualties. That they had us on alert because uh, they didn't know if if the Soviet Union was going to get involved or whoever might get involved. So we were on alert to be ready to do whatever the military told us to do. But at least. The adrenaline was flowing. I had only been on alert maybe three or four times. Uh, I was new, new, new. So I was scared like everybody else. But you have that peace within you that the Lord's watching out for you, and it'll be okay no matter what. Mm -hmm. It'll be all right. And you had that. And, and, I, and I had that, and I was so thankful for that, yes. And that's so important to have that peace. Yeah, that peace within, right. What I like is now all of you are in God's army. <laughs> yes. And, you know, Kathy was pointing out earlier about how the military is so structured and that everything has to be, you know, each segment, everybody's doing their own thing, but they're all working together. Right. And it's kind of like the body of Christ, mm -hmm. you know, right. where everybody has a responsibility yes. to work together. And then in this case, it's to win souls and bring people into the kingdom in this final hour. Yes, and Denny, real quick, I know we have to take another break here, but you know, through your training of becoming a pilot, you ended up flying our missionary plane, yes. the 747 SP. That's right. And so God worked it all out. God that worked you were... it out. He brought me out of the service and uh, gave me the training that I needed to be part of the crew on the, 
on Star Triple Seven, right? And it's just wonderful. That, that was a big blessing. Yes, <laughs> a very big blessing. And it's wonderful that you two also are part of this Jesus ministry, helping to, you know, take Jesus to the world. It's just wonderful. Well, we got to take a quick break. So friends, stay with us. We have more to come. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and we want to thank Denny, Les, and Nick for being on the program today and for sharing your wonderful stories. But most of all, we want to thank you for serving our country. Yes, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for serving and all that you've done and all that you're doing for the Lord. What a huge blessing. Yes. Friend, we'd like to give you this opportunity right now to accept Jesus Christ into your heart. Pray with me and say, oh God, Save my soul. Forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Amen. If you meant that prayer, you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Now we'd like to pray a special prayer for all the veterans. Maybe you're struggling physically or mentally. Let the Lord move for you today. Lord, Heavenly Father, break their bondage. Set them free in the blood name of Jesus. Heal them of every sickness or disease or ache or pain in their body. And also, Lord, move for them mentally. Give them the strength that they need. Anoint their minds with a special anointing. And Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing for our veterans. In the blood name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Friend, come and be with us at Grace Cathedral. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Ernest Angley Ministries.